Hello Witch Gem Games here once again and in this video we're going to create a sprinting system that works with stamina. So yeah, let's get started. First we want to go to the inputs under the blue uh, horror game and we want to go to the actions and we want to duplicate any one of these. Let's duplicate the jump. Let's call it I A print. Okay, let's go back to the input. Let's open the IMC default. And let's open the mappings and let's add a new one. Let's select our IA sprint and let's map it to left shift. Okay, let's save and let's close. Now let's go back to the horror game and blueprints and let's open the BB player character. And here let's go under here let's right click and search for a sprint and we have this enchant enchanced action events ia sprint let's add that to here now let's create a function this will be called start printing okay and here what we want to do we actually have to create a few variables. Let's first create the first one, which will be called can print. Okay, let's compile so we can make it true. Okay, this is very important. Okay, so make sure it's turned to true. Okay, then what we want to do, we want to create another. Actually, we want to first add this to a category called print. Now let's create a new variable and this will be called printing. And also let's add it to sprint. Compile this will be false. Okay. The next one will be called print speed and this will be type float. And under the sprint, let's compile so we can adjust the default value. Let's set this to 500 first. Okay. Now we can duplicate this. And this will be called walk speed. Okay. Let's compile and let's set this to be 250. And when you du duplicate it, that uh, sprint speed, it will uh, like automatically put it under the same category. So it's already on the sprint. So the next thing that we want to do, we want to create another variable. This will be called stamina print. And we want to put this under stamina. Now we want to duplicate this and we want to call it stamina max. Let's duplicate it once more will be called stamina brain amount and let's duplicate it again this will be called stamina fill amount and yeah now let's go to the stamina current and let's compile let's set this to be 100 stamina max let's go there and compile and set this to 100 also Let's go to stamina train amount. Let's set this to be one. And stamina fill amount. Let's set this to be one. Now let's compile and let's save all just to be sure. So now we can start creating the start sprinting function. So what we want to do first, we want to get our stamina current. We want to, of course, check that it's greater than zero because we want to have some stamina so we can start sprinting. Okay, now we want to add another boolean here. So let's get end boolean and let's actually add, make this as our favorite because we will need this in the future a lot. Now let's get the can sprint and connect it also to here. So if we can sprint and we have more than zero stamina, then let's add a branch, connect it to here connect this to the condition. If all of those are true, then we can set the sprinting to true, like this. 
And after that, what we want to do is we want to get our character movement and we want to set max walk speed. And what we want to set it to will be our print speed. Okay, that 500 that we have set. After that, we want to actually create another function. This will be called stop printing. And then we also want to create a function called train stamina and one more, which will be called fill stamina. Okay. So let's go back to the start sprinting. And here, what we want to do next is we want to right click and set timer by function name. Let's connect it to here. And this function name will be this train stamina. So we can actually copy it from here. Control C and paste it here. Control V. Now to the time we want to get world delta seconds. So it will basically, uh, time will be one frame. So when we make it looping, it will call this function every frame until we call, uh, make it stop. Now we want to promote this to a variable. This will be called stamina timer. And we want to also put it under the stamina. Now let's compile and save again, just to be sure. Now let's move this a little bit further because we will have to do something here before this with the stamina timer that we just created. So let's get the stamina timer and let's clear and invalidate timer handle. And we will invalidate here before because we will also use this for the uh, fill stamina function. So it will clear the function if the, for example, the fill stamina function is running, it will invalidate it before it starts to work with this. Okay, let's compile and save. Now let's go to the train stamina function. Here what we want to do, we want to get our stamina current. We want to check if it's greater than zero, of course. Let's add a branch, B and left click. If it's greater, what we want to do is we want to get the stamina current again, and we want to minus from it, so subtract, and we want to get the stamina drain amount and connect it to there. So we will subtract the one from it, and then we want to set it back to B to stamina current. Okay, and if we don't have a stamina anymore, what we want to do is we want to just call the stop sprinting function. Okay, let's compile and save all again. So if we have stamina, we will start to decrease it. If we don't, we will stop sprinting. And next, let's go to the stop sprinting function. And here what we want to do, we want to first set the sprinting to be false. Then we want to get our character movement. And we want to set max walk speed. And we want to set it to be the walk speed. So walk speed variable. Okay. And after that, what we want to do, we want to get our stamina timer. And we want to clear and invalidate timer by handle like this. And then we want to call the fill. Uh, no, 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 sorry. We actually have to create one more function or actually event. So let's compile, save, and let's go to the event graph. Let's find some empty space. I will find some from here. Let's right click and let's create a custom event. This custom event will be 
called stamina peel delay okay and here we want to create a delay but not normal we want to create this re triggerable delay let's make the time for example two seconds let's align this now we want to get the stamina timer handle again and we want to clear and invalidate it after that what we want to do we want to set timer by function name again and we want this function name will be fill stamina so let's copy it the time will be get world delta seconds and it will be looping then we want to get our stamina timer and we want to set it here to this value okay compile save so now we will when we call this we will start waiting two seconds then we will invalidate the uh, old timer or the old function then we will start the fill stamina function and promote it to be this same variable okay and now um, we have to go back to the stop sprinting and we want to call this stamina fill delay stamina fill delay so here when we call this function we will make the sprinting false we will set a walk speed back to walk speed and we will invalidate the old timer and we will call this stamina fill delay now the last thing that we have to create is fill stamina function here we want to first get our stamina current we want to check if it's less than our stamina max so if our stamina is not full let's add a branch b and left click so if it's not full we want to get our stamina current and we want to add to it so plus add and we want to add stamina fill amount then we want to get the stamina current and we want to set it from the true and if it is already true so if the stamina current is not less than the stamina max then we want to get the stamina timer we want to clear and invalidate timer by handle like this compile and save and let's go to the event graph here where we created this ia sprint we have to now connect those functions so to the start it to this one we want to connect the start sprinting and on the completed we want to connect the stop sprinting uh, sorry to the completed compile save all now let's do one more thing so we can see that everything is working let's go and find some empty space let's right click and search for a tick event event tick let's see that our stamina current is actually uh, decreasing and increasing so let's get our stamina current let's right click and print string let's connect this to the in string and let's open this and make let's make the duration 0, 0.0 okay compile and save so let's try so the sprinting is working stamina is working now we cannot run when we don't have stamina now we can again but only one problem we have if we go backwards and we run it will look like this okay so let's fix that so let's go back to the vp player character and what we want to do here we want to go to the start springing and here to the start we want also add the sorry we have to first go to the event graph and then we have to go to here movement input we want to select all this and we want to collapse to function okay 
let's call this function movement input. Okay, now let's rename these input pins. The first one will be called x value and the second one will be y value. Okay, let's delete these backgrounds from here. Now let's open the movement input. Let's move this here. And what we want to do next is we want to get this x value from here and we want to promote it to a variable. Get it here and add a reroute by double clicking and moving it here. And now this y value we want to promote to a variable also. And add a reroute here. Now let's rename the variables. The first one is x value and the second one is y value. And after that, what we want to do, we want to check if the y value is greater than, and we want to check that it's greater than 0.5. Let's add a branch. So if it is greater than 0.5, it means that we are pressing forward. Okay. And why 0.5 is because if we press forward and right, it will be 0.5 to the forward and 0.5 to the right. So it will still work. Okay. Now the we want to get the printing and we want to add a branch. We could put this both on the same branch, but I think this is better because now we are only always checking this and when that's true, then we will check this. Okay. And then we want to call the stop printing like this. Compile and save. Now we have to do one more thing. Let's go to the start sprinting and we want to get the y value. And we want to check that it's greater than 0.5. Let's add a pin and connect here. And I actually noticed that I made, made a little mistake. So let's go back to the movement input. We want to check that this is less than 0.5. When it's less than 0.5, we want to that we are sprinting and if we are we want to stop sprinting okay sorry about that so compile and save and now let's go back to the event graph here what we also want to do we want to get the x value we want to set it on completed we want to set it to zero also the y value we want to set it back to zero like this now we can compile and save all. Okay, here on character movement, let's set the max walk speed to 250. Okay, compile and save. And also one more thing, when we renamed this folder on the start, we also got the connection to the level. So let's go to the project settings. Let's go to the uh, maps, editor startup map. Let's open the, select the third person map. Now let's close and now we can play. So let's see, can we run backwards? We can't, but forward we can and a little bit to the left. And only to the left, we can't. Only to the right, we can't. Okay, yeah, everything is working like it's supposed to work. So I think that was all for this video. If you liked what you saw, please click the like button and subscribe for more. And yeah, hope you have a great day and see you on the next one. Bye.